Hi, so this is the last video for this series on transposons. It's a very short series. So yeah, the end um we're gonna discuss a few applications for transposons. So the first one is the sleeping beauty transposon. Now it's called sleeping beauty because it's been dormant for many many years, one point five million years in the salmon and trout or trout. Salmon genome. Um, yeah, actually, most of our transposons are silenced they, by epigenetics. They are kept like they are not supposed to jump because you don't want so many things jumping about in your genome. It causes a lot of mutations, as you uh, can see in the previous, um, actually, in the first video, how when it jumps around, it can disrupt genes, it can do all sorts of things, and you'll spoil your whole genome. So things like, um, actually when your transposons get more active, it, like, there are some diseases that have been associated with cancer, of course, and Alzheimer's, where your ALU elements have seen to be, like, you know, people with Alzheimer's, they, Alzheimer, yeah, I think Alzheimer's, they have uh, more ALU elements in their brain cell thing. Yeah, there's just some data suggesting it. So anyway, it's better to keep all your jumping genes like suppressed so that you have more stability. So most of it has been suppressed and is non-autonomous. But recently, these two scientists, I think they're Russian, I'm not sure, they managed to resurrect it, sort of, like, by, um, I don't know how, but they managed to make it jump again. So now it can move. So this is the recognition site. Remember, for your uh, integrase enzymes, integrase or transposase enzymes, you need this recognition site. I think this is a DNA transposon. Yeah, so it's transposase. There's this recognition site here. It's a very simple recognition site. So you have many, many of it in your human genome, about 200 million of it. Yeah, that's a good thing because we can use it for gene therapy. Like um, some people... They have two recessive genes for some diseases, like maybe sickle cell anemia, I think. Yeah, so if they have the copy, their defective copies of genes, and you want to deliver uh, new copies that are good, that make the proper functional genes, you can use this Sleeping Beauty transposon. Because if you remember, all you need for a transposon is your... Is your um terminal inverted repeats and you need it on both ends so whatever is in the middle you can put all your genes your genes of interest and all that uh, you can even put green fluorescent protein and you can make your animal glow if you want yeah so um yeah you can put uh genes like maybe insulin genes for diabetics i'm not sure yeah gene therapies type 1 type 1 diabetics uh yeah and there are some pros of using this instead of traditional vectors like viruses or plasmids now first of all okay this is non-autonomous so it's less disruptive as mentioned before they won't cause so many mutations and it's easier to make and it's cheaper to make because it's easier to make um because it's only dna and maybe a bit of transposase enzymes yeah they, they need to supply externally because this is a non-autonomous um, uh, transposon so this and also yeah so viruses are very expensive to make actually as a uh, gene therapy and not only that viruses you know your immune system will start recognizing it producing antibodies and well effectively destroying the cure yeah so this one is only dna and some proteins so you'll hopefully like it will you know, get less response from the immune system. And also, it can integrate into the genome, as you uh, can see from the previous video. Second one, actually. Yeah, so this is unlike plasmids. Alright, so these are all the benefits of using uh, transposons as vectors. For the cons, these are the pros. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe it's not been extensively researched now. Not sure, but that, 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 that will eventually... I mean, if they like it, they'll do more research on it. And yeah, so the next um, application is signature tag mutagenesis. 
Mutagenesis means making mutants. Genesis is making things, and these are mutants. So, um, to do this, this is okay. I'll explain this later. This to do this first, use restric restriction enzymes. Uh, yeah, restriction enzymes, and you can insert special tags inside. So each each of these tags are unique, and usually radioactive. They label it radioactive bases. So nucleotides, radioactive nucleotides. So each of it is unique. So over here, I have one red one, one purple one, one green one. Uh, these are the marker colors I have. I have blue one, but I have a blue one, but um, do I want to draw so many? So anyway, these are all the radioactive tags. So now these are transposons with these radioactive tags inside. Whether they're the same transposon or different transposon, I'm not too sure. I'm sure both can be used. Both are fine, but anyway, after you have these transposons, you're going to introduce them to the bacteria. Now, as said before, it will start randomly inserting itself into wherever it can find the recognition site. The, the target site, sorry. Yeah, wherever it can find, you'll just go in. So, it will be random, and hopefully, it will disrupt different genes. So, each of these will hopefully disrupt a separate gene. So that you can see a variety of effects. Okay? So, let's say you have uh, three bacteria now. And each of it have uh, different gene disrupted. So, now you're going to test these mutants. You're going to inject them or like scratch the skin or something. Yeah, with it. Like, put on toothpick and then scratch the skin. I, I, I don't know. That's how they developed the first vaccine. Yeah. So anyway, um, yeah, you can test on this on mice or flies or whatever your target organism is. <laughs> so if these bacteria, these bacteria, some will, of course, you don't use three. You use many, 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 many more. So they have a ver so they have a variety of effect. And the more you use, the more genes you can disrupt separately. Yeah. So let's say you have three only. Okay, and uh, this one happened, and after after everything, you go and check where these have gone into. Yeah, you can go and check using PCR or... Um, actually, now it's quite cheap to sequence the genomes, but I'm not sure if... I'm not sure how cheap, because I'm not researching. Okay, anyway, so better not don't say so much. Okay, anyway, um, let's say this g disrupts gene A. This disrupts gene B, purple disrupts gene C. And A and B happen to still be able to cause diseases, so it's virulent. And C cannot cause diseases anymore. So from this, you can sort of guess that gene C is a bit more necessary for causing diseases. And now you can design drugs and whatever, go and find the protein that it makes, and maybe it's a toxin, and you can design drugs to counter it or something like that. So yeah, and if you use a lot of transposons and each tag has to be a unique tag, then you can scan a lot of the genome. Yeah, mostly it's bacteria. I'm not sure what other organisms they have been using it for. Yeah, so you can scan the entire genome for pathogenic genes. That's what they call it. Yeah, so that is one application of... Another application of the transposons. So, thank you for watching this video, for watching the entire series, and all that. Yeah, um, see you, bye.